Welcome to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. Behind me you will see the General Sherman tree, which is considered the largest tree on the planet. It's about 270 feet tall, 36 feet in diameter at its base. One of the things that's very unique about giant sequoias is they grow really only in the western slopes of the Sierra Nevada in California. Their extent used to be much greater, but right now you'll find them nestled between about 5,000 to 7,000 feet in elevation uh, on the western slopes ranging from Yosemite just south of these parks here. The giant sequoia tree is a very selective tree right now. It really only grows in the western slope of the Sierra Nevada. Uh, roughly between 5,000 and 7,000 feet in elevation. And they are very selective to this area for a reason, which is they are a very thirsty tree. They drink a lot of water in the, in the summer months. And what feeds them in California, where we don't have a regular rain or, or snow season in the summer months, we're quite hot and dry, is a tremendously wonderful snowpack that we do get in the winter months that can melt and feed these sequoias year round. One of the things that's very unique about giant sequoias, why they can grow so big, is that they actually grow very, very fast. From, ver uh, from a young age, they'll put on girth. Every year, their tree rings at their younger ages grow very, very quickly. Um, and then as they mature, that growth rate will slow down and they'll slowly more grow up. But they are unique and part of why they are the largest trees because they do put on bulk, so to speak, and girth very quickly as a young tree. Another very interesting facet about giant sequoias is that they are a fire adapted species. If you look at the General Sherman seat tree, you will see fire scars at its base. Many of those scars are a thousand, maybe two thousand years old. And this area, the Sierra Nevada range, sees a lot of lightning. And prior to European settlers putting that lightning out, uh, these fires would burn sometimes for months. And what the sequoias did is adapt and learn to take advantage of this natural fire cycle. And that the giant sequoia cone actually opens with fire and their tiny seeds fall to the forest floor below where the forest has cleansed it to a bare mineral soil, which is ideal conditions for giant sequoia seeds to germinate. One of the very interesting things about giant sequoia ecology is that they are a fire adapted species, which means that they've learned to take advantage of fire over the years. The Sierra Nevada range sees a lot of lightning and has for thousands and thousands of years. So they've learned over those years to not only survive a fire, but take advantage of a fire when it comes. If you look at the giant sequoia tree, you'll see a very dense red bark. That bark is very thick. It's full with tannin, which is fire resistant, which means that as the fire burns through, the tree's actually got a pretty good resistance to fire and can survive a fire very well. As you can see, this bark here is very thick. And again, the red with the tannin to help it help the tree survive fires as they come through. These fire scars here are perhaps 100,000, maybe even 2,000 years old. But what you can also see is, is this tree, after the fire comes through, slowly builds over and grows over that scar and reprotects the, the trunk of the tree. The other thing you'll notice is it has a very high canopy. As that tree matures, it will drop its lower branches. And again, that keeps the fire that's on the ground from getting into the crown of the tree. They have a tiny little seed, or a tiny little cone. It's about the size of an egg. Within that is about 250 seeds, which are about the size of a piece of oatmeal. So think about that. You have the largest tree on the planet, and its seeds are about the size of a piece of oatmeal. Now that cone doesn't naturally open through external forces. It's very stiff. It's called a semi serotonous cone, which means it needs an external force, in this case fire, to expand the dense sap inside, open it up, and allow those tiny seeds to come cascading down onto the forest floor. Additionally, because the seeds are so small, if there's litter build up, all those leaves and twigs and branches that build up on the forest floor, that seed will not be able to put down root and grow and make another baby giant sequoia. So not only have these trees learned to live with fire and survive fire as it comes through, they are actually taking advantage of the natural fire cycle for their own germination. Another thing about giant sequoias is they are sun-loving species. For those young saplings to grow and be healthy, they need a lot of open, sunny forest. The Sierra Nevada is not a naturally dense forest. 
and the force that helped open that canopy and, and keep it bright and sunny is a regular cycle of fire that removes a certain amount of the trees and keeps that open sunny canopy that the gi giant sequoias love so much. When these parks were first set aside, one of the first thing parks rangers did was keep fire out of the sequoia groves because the feeling was we needed to protect these groves from fire. But it st we started to realize maybe in the 1960s that we were missing whole generations of young sequoias. In the 1960s, several researchers looked into why giant sequoias were not germinating. And one of the things they explored was that the natural fire cycle was missing from these forests. And their first experiments were on a very small scale, maybe four acres were treated with fire. But what they discovered was the next year that literally thousands of baby sequoias had grown where the fire had been. So that was really what started to kickstart park rangers to understand that we needed to return the natural cycle of fire to sequoia groves for their very own survival. One of the things that really helped giant sequoias survive when American expansion was first happening is that they do not make a good timber. Their wood is very brittle. And there was a, a large push to, to log the largest tree on the planet and imagine that there would be a great deal of profit from such large board, uh, board timber. But the giant sequoias are very brittle, so when the trees were felled, they would actually shatter and break apart. And as a rule, what people were able to make out of giant sequoias were shingles for roofs or fence posts. And uh, it wasn't a highly profitable timber like their cousins, the coastal redwood, and that helped protect them from overlogging. Now, the giant sequoia is not the tallest tree. That is actually the coastal redwood. It's not the oldest tree, which is the bristlecone pine. However, it is the largest tree because of its amazing girth and it's its wide girth that makes it the largest tree on the planet.